G'day guys, welcome back to Supercoach with DR and welcome to the round eight review. Look for me this week, it was an interesting week in Supercoach. I made one of the biggest mistakes that I'd made in a long time playing this game, just a rookie error on my behalf. I'll talk about that a little bit more when we take a look at the side. It's also NAPLAN week this week. So if you're a parent and you've got a child in grades three or grade five, or year seven or year nine, you'll know what this week's all about. A lot of pressure on the students and a fair bit of pressure on the teachers as well. So I'll be working pretty late into the night for the majority of this week, which means that I will have to get through this round review pretty quickly. And that way I can spend as much time as I can on the stock market video. And I have made a commitment to get that out each and every week, regardless of how busy I am, that will be out this week as well. So stay tuned for that. Hopefully Wednesday morning is what I'm aiming for anyway. But the score for this week was 22.30, which was around par, I think, give or take a few points. It was top 4% for the round, if that gives you a bit of an idea. For the season rank now, it's 1,047, moved up 27 spots, so I'm inching closer and closer to getting inside the top 1K. That's my goal in the next fortnight, I think. But let's get straight into it. Let's have a look at how the team went. And I'll tell you what, this week, the defenders really let me down. Now, Tommy Stewart certainly was not a man that let me down. That score of 92, I really think he was underscored. If you take a look at his stats, I think he had a good impact on the game. There are a couple of clangers thrown in there, which I can understand. But in my opinion anyway, and you'll hear this a lot, owner bias, I think that that was at least a ton from Tommy Stewart. So not concerned with that at all. Remember last week I did say that I think he's probably a player that should be between the 540 to 580 mark, 560 type mark for the majority of the season. He's not really a 600K type player but one of the safest players in Supercoach 2021, I think. So really happy with the Tommy Stewart selection. I endorse him each and every week. Got a really nice buy as well. Uh, the Seagull, Jake Lloyd, well, it was just another Seagull game from him, wasn't it? Looking like a 125 plus score, getting back to the old days, but only finished on a 111. But when I say only, clearly my top scoring defender this week. So if you don't have the Seagull, I think he's a good trade-in, probably competing with Callum Mills, I think, for a defensive spot in your back line. So Jordan really 84. After an 88 last week, I really wanted to see a 110 at least from Ridders this week, but unfortunately didn't happen. For non-owners, you'll get a bargain with Jordan Ridley for what he can produce. Now, the main question is, will he produce this for the rest of the season? I'll take a look at some of the data in the stock market video, but at this stage, I still recommend him as a trade-in. Do I think he's a must-have? on the borderline, I think now. Jaden Short, 98 after a 113 last week. I'm not gonna complain with a 95 plus from Shorty. We're hoping that he can get that 95 to 120 plus most weeks. Sometimes, yeah, he'll go under that 90 mark. We've seen a couple of scores in the 60s, which is disappointing. So when he pumps out 98, yeah, I'm not getting too excited, but I will suppose that I'll take it. Stephen Mate, so he was one of my trade-ins for this week. Now, I was always making this trade out Errol and in Stephen May. That was not my trade-in disaster for the week. So with May, had a really nice first half. I think midway through the second quarter, he was on about 44, 45 points. Ended up on 47, I think, at half time. So slow end to the second quarter and then only ended up on a 77 at the end of the game. But I think he played a bit of a selfless role over the weekend, took good care of Buddy, and just didn't really give him a look in, unfortunately, for Buddy and his owners, which I don't think are many at this year anyway. But uh, yeah, Steve May, I'm still happy with the selection because you pay 400K for the bloke. I was just in a position where I needed to look for a bit of value, and he was the most obvious selection for me last week anyway. So May comes into the side. And that now brings me to my rookie mistake. All right, long story short. So I'm having a chat with Spills Friday night because the news had just dropped that Frederick was not going to be in the best 22. I think he was in most people's trade plans, Frederick. But had a bit of a chat and talked it through and then decided that we weren't actually going to downgrade this week. And we were just going to go one up, keep an extra trade up the sleeve and use that as a little bit of an advantage because we were looking forward and thought, well, you've got RCD that's coming up, uh, Poulter, Burns. Um, there's another couple of blokes as well around the mark that'll be up for selection on the bubble this week. So we thought, yeah, look, 
maybe we'll just upgrade. So that was a decision moving forward. Saturday morning, I then give my brother a call, and we're talking a little bit of super coach, talking about future trades, and originally, obviously going with Freddie, and he said, well, what are you looking to do now? He said, why don't you look to get in Murphy? And I explained that, look, I think Murphy's a really good selection, but the only option that I'd really have to trade out is Jordan Butts, and I think that after rethinking the situation, he's just going to do that perfect D6, hopefully D7, at least up until the buys, great job security, has the capabilities to go 80 plus, also throwing a few stinkers, but you've got to expect that from someone like a Butts who plays that key position type role. And thought, yep, I'm just going to keep on to Butts, explain the situation to him. You thought, oh, okay, that makes sense. How much money would you have though if you did bring in someone like a Murphy? So I just had a bit of a play around with it, worked out to be about 330K and talked about how we could use that and all the rest. But obviously I was completely against it by this stage. And this is where the brain fade came into play. For some unknown reason, and still, I don't know what happened. My thumb just moved and had a mind of its own. Instead of exiting out of that trade, I ended up pressing complete trade and confirmed it through. You just wouldn't believe it. As soon as I did it, I'd realized what I'd done, had a massive panic attack, heart just dropped, tried to turn off the phone, thought hopefully it hasn't gone through, turn off the phone, turned it back on, and I see Nathan Murphy on the field in place of Jordan Butts. So I was absolutely shattered with that, could not believe what I'd done, just a rookie error, as I said. So we fast forward to half time anyway. He's on 41 or 42 points it was, and at this stage I'm laughing going, this mistake that I've just made, has worked out in spades. This is absolutely brilliant. He's going to go around an 80, make me some nice cash, got a great role on the wing. And mind you, he was still my second best buy-in in our defensive lines this week behind Frederick. But uh, I think Frederick was that really obvious selection. But Kenny pulled a bit of a shifty one on us there and may have destroyed him as a rookie selection. But that's a story for the stock market video. But anyway, Murphy was in my side. Saw his score at half time, thought, you little ripper, gave my brother a call and said, absolutely brilliant, fantastic, had a bit of a gloat, thank you very much, mate, for making me make the mistake, which he didn't make me, it was simply my error. And then, yeah, mate, the third quarter starts, three, four minutes in, big head knock with Taron Thomas, and it looks like he's concussed. Didn't take any further play, part in any further play in the game, and just so unfortunate. You know, he was looking really, really good, there may be a slight positive, the fact that I have heard news that it wasn't an official concussion. He had had some concussion issues earlier on the season, so they were just taking a cautious approach. So I've got fingers crossed that he does play this week because as you can see, my other options there are Mansell and Highmore. Highmore I'm about to give up on, and Mansell was extremely fumbly over the weekend, just didn't really look up to scratch in certain stages of the game, and they were clutch stages in the game as well. So I was pretty disappointed with his output. output sorry, uh, Look, he is a younger type player. We can forgive him for that. Mature body though. Um, but yeah, I just don't see him playing this week. So if Murphy's out, Mansell's out, Highmore probably expecting not to play again this week. I'm looking at a donut. So the options I've got, well, there's pretty much one option, and that's to trade out Mansell. If Mansell plays, I'm all good, I'm all sweet. I'll just let him fill in for the week. But I don't think that that's going to happen with a few plays to come back into the side. So we'll have to see what happens there. But that was my rookie mistake, mistake sorry. Press confirm. Couldn't believe it. And uh, still now, I'm just dumbfounded about what actually happened there. But we'll move on from that. Uh, another day, another week. So in the midfield, Sam Walsh, probably the first time he's let us down. A score of 89, and again, this isn't a disaster. So we're not talking like a 70-type score that we've seen from Brayshaws, Titch types that are also around the same price point. So, yeah, look, well, they, they're not now, but um, they were, you know, earlier on the season. But, look, I'm not too worried by that Sam Walsh score, 89. Look, I did mention that I have a slight concern going forward that he will cop a fair bit of attention, but uh, I don't think that that was really the case on the weekend. He just came up against a really solid dogs midfield. So I'll forgive Sam Walsh. But uh, if you brought him in this week, you would be a little bit disappointed. Clary, 125, just keeps doing what he does. Love this selection. I think he's a must-have midfielder this year. Again, so I'm going to go through these really quickly. 
Zeret, finally, he's 150th. He's livid. I only mentioned last week that I'd love to see him go just at least 130, 140 type score. And 131, he delivered on that. So wrapped with his last month. And I've got a lot more confidence in, in this pick now. Titch, the man finally delivered. And I will go into some stats on a bit of a deeper level in the round review. But just for example, this first quarter, 10 disposals, two intercept marks, a tackle or two thrown in there. And best of all, 90% disposal efficiency. So he found himself on 42 points, I think it was, at the end of the first, and just continued with that good form for the rest of the game. So I'd almost lost hope on the Titch selection. Uh, he's not an ultra pod, but he's a bit of a pod, particularly in the blokes that I'm coming up against in league matches, in my cashies anyway. So absolutely stoked with this 147. Do you bring him in after one good week? Well, we did see what happened with Neil. That was a little bit different because he got injured, I suppose. But I still would be a little bit cautious with this selection, but certainly coming into play, particularly given the fact he's got a really nice buy. Rory Laird, I didn't actually watch this match. Uh, I was watching another match over the showdown. I forget which one it was. Uh, 125, though, I heard that he was almost best on ground. So he's come back with a really nice score. That pattern again, you know, a few averages, really bounces back. An average run thrown in here and there, but... What's the season average? 103.5 now. So a 105 season average, 107, probably what I'm expecting from Leedy from here on out. Brayshaw just had a terrible game. Like, he wasn't tagged. I watched the game pretty closely. Was playing off a wing, though. Uh, yeah, just nothing went right for Brayshaw. A couple of free kicks against. Disposal efficiency was absolutely shocking. Had a Tom Phillips-type performance with the ball this week. So... At the price that you pay for him, you've got to expect these type scores. But the really disappointing thing for me was the fact that it wasn't due to a tag. You know, we can expect it if he cops a really hard tag, but that simply wasn't the case over the weekend. He just had a bit of a mare. Really hit back in the last quarter, which was nice because we'd pretty much had the game sewn up by then. And I just wanted to see Brayshaw really hit hard. And uh, he did do that in the last quarter, which was nice to see. But a little bit disappointing from Lions at the same stage. That could have been, you know, a 60-point victory, I think. But four goals in the end, you still take the four points, I suppose. But yeah, with Brayshaw, yeah, certainly disappointed this week. But hopefully moving forward, we won't see too many more games like that. Tommy Powell, 73, so one of his poor performances over the last month. And if that's a poor performance for a rookie, you know that he's going bloody well. So it is tempting to trade him out because he's getting to that stage where that break even will start to match up with that average. But given the fact that he's pumping out such nice scores, I'll be really loath to do that. And I think it's an okay setup if you're running six premiums in your mid and have Powell and Jordan on field because they're still scoring really well. Jordan... Geez, that could have been a 100-plus game from him. At halftime, or even after quarter time, it was looking even like a 120-plus type performance. But with Viney out of the side, he had a really nice role. Yeah, it was a really important part of the win over the weekend. So I love owning this bloke. Many people, as we've mentioned over last month, probably traded him a little bit too early. But we've seen the ceiling that Jordan has. Love this selection. Going to keep him for as long as I can, I think, on field. Berry. Without a doubt, on the chopping block this week, or a potential player to be on the chopping block, that 45, that's what you're going to get from him basically each and every week because he just doesn't find enough of the ball, loves to tackle. And that's what he bases his game off, that pressure. But, yeah, certainly not an odd field selection, and he's an emergency, your classic type emergency. The only issue with trading out a Berry is that he's actually playing at the moment, so he's a warm body on your bench. And I'm left with someone like a Brockman and a Fife you know, as my other coverage option. So for me, it's probably a more sensible option to trade out Brockman. We will be able to hear if he's going to be playing early on the week, which is nice and handy. But uh, yeah, you trade out the Berry that's at that 209, you know, your options probably open up a little bit more with that extra 40-odd K. Or do you get rid of a Brockman who doesn't look like he's going to come into the side anytime soon. Had he had, heard he had a really nice goal, nice mark over the weekend, but yeah, you know, he's just really patchy, I think, when it comes to form, and that's what you get when you're playing the role that he does. Fife, obviously, as my loophole. Uh, into the ruck, so Maxi, he's been a little bit disappointing, hasn't he? And I think that's probably due to the really solid form that we've seen from Luke Jackson, but is he still a captain option? I certainly think that he is. Uh, who's up? Who's he coming up against this week? Is it Carlton, maybe? 
I know that their Ruckman's gone down. So I think that he'll be another good choice this week, but I'm not even looking at captaincy options yet. That's, yeah, later on the week I'll take a closer look. Uh, Grundy with a 128. Yeah, fantastic from Grundy. I wasn't holding out too much hope of him going 110 plus, given the fact that we saw Gorn really struggle last week against Goldie. But yeah, he had a really good game, Grundy. And 128, I'll take that from him each and every week. Flynn, what do you do with him? You know, we thought that it would be Mummy that would be filling in for a week here or there when Flynn needed the rest. That's completely switched on its head now. So Mummy is certainly now the number one preferred Ruckman there at the Giants. Flynn is that backup option who will play when Mummy needs a rest. So we may get a couple more price rises before the buys if we're lucky. But my plan at this stage is to maybe get one more out of him and then trade him out or else, you know, do you hold him through the buys? You know, what happens if you do resist the temptation to use that downgrade cash it could make if you trade out Flynn and upgrade a premium, maybe after their buy preferably, you know, what happens if you keep him and then he's not even named? You'd just be, yeah, shattered with yourself, wouldn't you? So, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see come team names, uh, team sheet, sorry, with Flinny. Uh, Zeebel, 111, beautiful. Take that each and every week. Had a little bit of a knock, I think, but I think he gets up for this week. MP 116, absolutely love this selection. I will talk a lot more in the stock market video, but his run and carry is just phenomenal. They do love getting the ball in his hand, sets up plays, attacks, kick to goal, hit the scoreboard. Just a super, super game from Impey. So a 116, yeah, lovely, lovely, lovely. Oh, the opposite, Dusty. Be my worst trade in the year. Look, I've probably given the wrong advice and I've said, do not trade him out, don't trade him out. He'll come good. You're going to want him in your side anyway. But do you, with the form that he's in, I don't think he's a must trade in option at this stage. I'd simply wait till he hits form or hopefully when he hits form and get him in then. But uh, I'll just wait and see in regards to form with what you do with Dusty, but super, super disappointing. Don't even want to talk about him, to be quite honest. Uh, Chatty Warner, he's throwing out some 60s now. So he's a really tempting option to cull, I think, this week. I've thought about it, to be quite honest, but I just love Warner as a selection, and we know that he's got a decent ceiling. But his price point compared to the average suggests that this is the time to trade him out. But just a bit of a gut feel. I'm, I think that he'll bounce back. He's got a great role. We know that he plays every week. May need a rest in the next couple. I'm not too sure. But yeah, I'm still not sure what I'm doing with Warner, but most likely keeping him at this stage, I think. Scotty, an 85 absolutely phenomenal so particularly given the fact that i'm actually playing him on field at the moment and i'm forced to play him on field yeah i will take that uh, again hit a hit the scoreboard nice and early in the game and a really nice first quarter slowed up a little bit in the next couple i didn't watch the last quarter but yeah obviously had a fair impact so 85 from scott absolutely stoked with and stoked with this bloke as well so many teams would have traded him out this week my plan was to trade him out this week, but given the fact he's got an 81, yeah, that break even's come right back down again, so he now has more cash to make. And I don't even know if I can afford to trade him out, given the fact he is making cash when we've got so many other dead rookies. And in my case, R2D2, oh man, I had the best buy on Jai Farah, and for some reason just didn't take my own advice and, and trade in R2. So oh, I just didn't see this one coming. I thought he's played okay, averaged well over the first couple, plays for North Melbourne. They'll want to give these blokes a fair run. He was coming up against Collingwood, his old side. I just thought everything was in place for him to have a half-decent game. A lot of ball down there in the back line, you'd think. But he gets dropped, I omitted. I don't know how he went in the VFL. I'm hoping he carved it up. But yeah, who knows what happens with him moving forward. So I hope he's not going to be a dead rookie. The whole idea of trading him in was for his job security, for that on-field score of 60-plus, hopefully. Just not going to turn out that way. Hopefully this week he, he comes back because, uh, yeah, that will turn out to be a really, really bad trade. Waterman, not sure if he comes back in. Does he come in for Stringer? I'm not sure if they play the same role, given the fact that Stringer's been playing in the midfield a little bit more this season. I'm holding out hope that he does because, again, I just didn't see this one coming after one poor performance in the wet against Brisbane. He just hasn't made his way back into the side. So hopefully for 
many of our sakes, because I know he's a pretty popular selection, Waterman. He comes in sooner rather than later. Just even a couple of price rises before we need to trade him out uh, near the buyers would be absolutely spectacular and much appreciated, uh, Ben Rutten. So if you can do that for us, mate, yeah, we would absolutely love you. So that is it for this week. Now, in regards to the trades, uh, you know, I think... I'm not going to go right through it now because, as I said, I need to leave this video. I may even pump out another video just talking about my potential trades. But someone does need to knock me out with a hammer because for the first time ever, I'm actually contemplating, and I stress that word, contemplating, bringing a player into my side who I had the trap symbol on just last week. Now, you'll probably know the player that I'm talking about. He does play for a bottom four side. He's an option in our forward lines, around 420K. Durability is always a major concern. He's been dropped during many stages of his career. And yes, I'm contemplating bringing him into my side. The man is Aaron Hall. I can't believe me even saying this out loud. As I said, someone needs to give me a good slapping here and set me straight because... Look, the way that I'm viewing this at the moment anyway, and again, it is very early on in the week and I am tired, a real lack of sleep. And that may be the reason why I am contemplating this bloke who I said was a trap last week. Look, I think I've underrated the selection a little bit. I think if it's ever time to take a risk in Supercoach, it's this year in our forward lines at around this price point because there's no options saying, pick me, pick me. I've said the same thing over the last few weeks. You know, Bolton's looking really good, but still question marks in the long term with that selection. I think Zorko, okay, but getting old, durability issues last year. We haven't really seen that this year. Uh, so I may be giving him not enough credit for the way that he prepares. He's a real professional, and durability's never been an issue uh, apart from last year. So maybe he will be okay. I'm not too sure, but... I suppose the point I'm trying to make is that there is no real great options in my opinion and it may be a chance to jump on a player that could get on a really hot run. So I'll go through all this sort of stuff in the stock market video. Um, look, the other options I've got, I love Jared Lyons as a pod selection. I've been saying it for weeks and I wish I took my own advice, but I haven't been on Jared Lyons, but it's all about the structure here. You know, who are the trade-outs? A lot of it's going to depend on whether or not I even need to lose a Mansell, move Laird back to avoid a donut, and then bring a Poulter into the midfield and then look to go up in the forward line. Or else, do I even go up in the midfields as well? Because I will have another rookie spot on field, which would be Poulter. Who knows? So there's a lot of water to go under the bridge. But as I said, what I will do, and I definitely will do this, I'll put out another video. It'll just be a quick one during the week, and I'll let you know what I'm thinking in regards to my trades because my head is still all over the shop at the moment, and I really don't know what to do moving forward. But I'll have a good think about it, particularly when I do the research for the stock market video this week, and hopefully my ideas or my plans will start to fall into place anyway so that is it for now guys all the best of luck for this week and i'll see you soon in the stocky bye